Well, hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in today for what promises to be a really interesting exploration of Dr. Shestrad's uh, PhD uh, research. And um, just from reading some of the notes, it's, it's a fascinating approach to um, really uh, rethinking uh, the whole process, uh, introducing our speaker today will be our Australian board member, Ben Keeley. Um, take it away, Ben. Thank you, Dendra. Um, today we're hearing from Sohan and his PhD research conducted at the University of Queensland. Sohan was uh, researching iron salts and comparing them to the more standard uh, alum, which is used as a flocculent slash coagulant here in Australia. And he worked in the laboratory, took it out into the field, uh, which is always a fantastic way as far as uh, looking at your PhD research because there's nothing that beats using real wastewater to see how uh, your ideas and test testing your hypotheses um, as far as uh, seeing what works and what doesn't, which I think is why he's gone with a, a, a title here with the multi-concept saga from novice to ninja. So uh, as I've mentioned to him a couple of times, I'm not exactly sure what a Nepalese ninja is, but um, I'm looking forward to finding out and uh, seeing how this goes because I've been a long-term user of um, alum myself and uh, I'm hoping to by listening to this presentation and looking at the results to finding out whether I should be swapping over to iron salts. So take it away, Sohan. Yep. Thank you. Go ahead, Sohan, introduce yourself. Uh, hello, good morning, good afternoon. Uh, myself, Sohan, Sohan Rasta here. Um, so I, I was a former PhD student uh, at the Advanced Water Management Center, School of Chemical Engineering, University of Queensland, Brisbane, Australia. So, uh, Today I'll be talking about uh, uh, some of my PhD research work which I've conduct uh, conducted. Uh, today I'll be sharing light, briefly talking about uh, the mechanistic, underlying mechanistic um, uh, mechanism behind some of the beneficial aspect of dosing iron, either in the form of iron or iron rich sludge uh, in integrated urban wastewater system. So uh, basically, uh, I'll be talking about some of the results that we obtained uh, from our long-term laboratory studies, pilot tour studies, and a full-scale treatment plan studies. Uh, so the acronym, um, the statement, the mention I have here is multi-concept saga from the journey from novice to ninja is because I'll be highlighting today uh, how the project started uh, from the beginning phase, from the project conception to the completion. That's the reason why I mentioned the multi concept that the multi stands for multiple use reuses of iron salt or iron, and that's the journey from the project conception to completion. That's what I mean to say by literally the saga from novice to ninja. Talk with uh, some of the key concluding remarks. So it all started with this uh, science, research, science research paper, uh, paper which was published in 2014 by some of my senior researcher in our center. So this science paper, uh, it uh, basically deals with, uh, with, in this paper, the, it deals with the extensive industry survey and sampling campaign across Australia, which found out that the aluminum sulfate or alum, uh, which was used as a primary uh, coagulant during water treatment processes was a major culprit behind the sewer concrete corrosion. Uh, so that means uh, it, it concluded that the sulfide uh, was a major, uh, major reason behind the sewer concrete corrosion. So, so it concluded, this paper concluded that modifying the common treatment strategy. Uh, so that means to, to include the sulfate free uh, primary coagulant during the water treatment processes or in a water treatment plant could be dramatically to reduce or substantially reduce the sewer concrete corrosion. So talking about the advent of multi-concept, so the, this was a paper published in around 2011. It shows, uh, it was, uh, it shows the chemical dosing uh, for sulfide content in Australia. It was like an industrial survey. It shows like uh, 
the chemical dosing was the most commonly used measures for sulfide control in sewer system. As you can see from the from the chart, uh, the contribution of different chemicals uh, used to for the overall sulfide control. Uh, you can see iron salt is is a major major contributor, uh, major chemical we used as uh, used used in the sewer system to control the uh, sulfide production. Followed by oxygen, nitrate, magnesium hydroxide, also YMHL and sodium hydroxide. So these are some of the initial studies which were conducted uh, conducted there, which shows uh, which shows like uh, the upstream iron salt dosing not only controls the sulfide production in sewer, that also helps uh, in in the phosphate removal in downstream aeration tank and also helps to remove the sul uh, hydrogen sulfide in uh, digester biogas. So it concluded these all papers, initial earlier studies concluded that there is a synergy between upstream and downstream treatment process in terms of circular uh, chemical usage. So talking about the, the fragmented uh, approach, as I've said, mentioned before, uh, there used to be uh, the use of iron salt uh, in different domains of, uh, of our urban wastewater system, but uh, using the fragmented approach. As you can see from the diagram, the iron uh, salt was used, used to be used as coagulant water treatment plants and also used as a chemical precipitate in sewer system. And also uh, as a chemical precipitate or oxygen catalyst in, in downstream wastewater treatment plants. But all these uses of iron salt in different domains of urban wastewater system uh, were primarily relying on the fragmented approach instead of uh, the closed looped approach. So this is how the Murphy concept uh, come into play. Uh, uh, it, it, it basically aims at using uh, the iron salt, uh, the same iron salt in integrated manner. So considering the paradigm shift from fragmented or linear approach of chemical uses to integrated or closed loop approach. Uh, so which would, uh, so implementing the closed loop approach of chemical usage in different domains in urban wastewater system that will substantially reduce the chemical footprint of urban water utility. Uh, like I mentioned before, it iron salt used to be used as as a as separate as in the different domains of uh, uh, urban wastewater system. So this is the whole as as a concept uh, proof of concept of multi concept as you can see from the diagram. So the iron salt will be used as a primary coagulant in the water treatment plants and the sludge uh, that's generated from the water treatment plants will be used in the downstream sewer system, a sewer network that will help, that will help to reduce the sulfide uh, production in the sewer system. And that in turn, that in turn will help to uh, control the uh, sulfide induced uh, concrete corrosion. And and during the conveyance uh, that will eventually reach into the downstream treatment plant. Uh, so once it reaches the sewer, sewage reach, domestic sewage reach to the downstream treatment plant, that will help to remove the phosph phosphate in the bioreactor. And not only the removal of phosphorus in the bioreactor, it will also help, help to remove the uh, sulfide, hydrogen sulfide from digester biogen. So let me start with uh, some of the key research objectives of the project. So uh, uh, basically there were two key objectives of the project. One is to develop an integrated uh, urban wastewater model. That means integrated sewer and wastewater treatment plant model uh, that will help to serve as a model-based decision support tool. And second was to show the effectiveness of multi multiple uses of iron salt in different sub-components of urban water system. Uh, by conducting uh, uh, long-term lab-scale studies, pilot sewer studies, and full-scale uh, field studies. So the question here would be why plant-wide studies and why integrated urban wastewater modeling? So let me clarify that uh, the query, so why plant-wide studies? Because previous studies, which I mentioned before, they were conducted uh, to investigate the multiple beneficial aspect of using iron salt. Uh, in, in the control laboratory setting. Uh, so the, the studies that were con conducted into control laboratory setting may not be fully transferred into the full-scale wastewater treatment processes or wastewater treatment plants in the real life situation because of, uh, because of inherent dynamics in the inland wastewater 
uh, flow rate concentration of different different uh, pollutants and the composition of wastewater. So uh, in in this in this notion, it is deemed uh, that the plant-wide studies are are essential to validate uh, the results that we observe or we observe in 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 the different lab scale uh, lab scale studies. So. So then why, why integrated urban wastewater modeling? Because as I mentioned before, so there are different subcomponents uh, involved in the urban wastewater system or urban water system that include water treatment plant, sewer system and wastewater treatment plant. And, and the, good thing, uh, the good thing is the changes occurring in one subsystem uh, in upstream can have uh, the, the similar consequences in the performance of downstream treatment plant. I, I mean to say the changes occurring in the, the sewer system uh, can have the can have the downstream uh, implication in the wastewater treatment plant performance. Hence, uh, this development of integrated uh, integrated wastewater uh, sewer wastewater treatment plant model help uh, will help us to gain the in depth insight uh, with respect to inherent dynamics and various transformation occurring at the different stages of urban water uh, system when we dose iron either in the form of iron salt or in the form of iron rich water work plus. So let me uh, give a slight uh, brief introduction uh, overview about the different uh, unit process modeling uh, that, um, that existed in urban uh, water system. As you can see from the, from the, from the graph, uh, there are very different uh, unit uh, processes uh, uh, existed like the various empirical equation and the Watts model. And uh, we have our own UQ, uh, University of Queensland developed sewer process model. Uh, we commercially call it CUEX model. And we have different IWA standardized bio, biological uh, model so, such as ASM, ASM, uh, ASM2D and different for the uh, bio, bio reactor model. And also we have the ADM1 for, for to model the anaerobic digestion processes. And the novelty of uh, uh, this project was to, we aim to develop uh, the integrated sewer wastewater treatment plant model. And, uh, we, uh, so we aim to integrate uh, our own UQ developed sewer process model, CUVEX, with, uh, with activity slots model, with a modified ASM2DP. Uh, and that we are going to integrate with the with the standardized uh, IWA uh, anaerobic digester model that is ADM1P. Uh, so, with a notion like there is a paradigm shift not only in terms of uh, uh, chemical uses, uh, also there is a paradigm shift in terms of uh, the wastewater modeling. That means from the fragmented approach to integrated plant uh, system wide modeling. That's what we uh, we aim to develop. Uh, the integrated uh, sewer wastewater treatment, uh, treatment plant modeling platform. So, as you can see from the uh, diagram, uh, this is how we we uh, we develop uh, the uh, integrated sewer wastewater treatment plant modeling. That means by developing a CUVEX AS, ASM activity loss model modified uh, activity loss model to the interface. So in a nutshell, uh, so what what we can what we can see is like there has been uh, the paradigm shift in in a three major aspect of urban wastewater management approach. The first is the chemical uses, as I mentioned uh, before. There has been a paradigm shift in from linear to circular uh, or the closed loop approach of chemical uses in urban wastewater system. That means the delivering the closed loop approach. Uh, so this would sustain this would help us to substantially uh, reduce the chemical uses in chemical uses in uh, urban water or urban wastewater system and second is uh, there is a uh, there is a change in the concept of wastewater treatment plant so we in, in a recent year we no longer uh, use the term wastewater treatment plant simply wastewater treatment plant is viewed as a water resource recovery facility and also uh, like uh, the chemical uses trend, uh, change in the chemical uses trend in urban wastewater system, there has been change in the uh, the modeling modeling scenario. That means uh, from there has been paradigm shift from linear or uh, different uh, separate uh, modeling uh, unit processes 
to the plant-wide or a system-wide modeling. Uh, so the developing a system-wide modeling or the plant-wide uh, integrated urban wastewater modeling that will help us to uh, incorporate different biological, biochemical and physical, uh, physiochemical models that has been, that are existed in recent years. So this is all about uh, how the, the concept of uh, multi started. So now let me, let me focus my talk to the process outcome. So let me start the project outcomes with the iron salt dosing uh, long-term laboratory studies. Uh, so in terms of the laboratory studies, what we deal with, like uh, as you can see from the graph, uh, it consists of two parallel lines. One was considered as a control line, another is experimental line, and each line consists of uh, the rising main sewer, that means the pressurized sewer system, sewer reactor, uh, that was followed by the sequencing bath reactor and uh, gravity slug thickener and anaerobic digester. So, talking in, in terms of sequencing bath reactor, this, uh, the the slug retention time was 16 days, and 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 similarly the hydraulic retention time of uh, anaerobic digester used into the both control and experimental line was 20 days. And the anaerobic digester was uh, was uh, was the temperature. Uh, in the anaerobic digester was mentioned was maintained around 37 degrees Celsius. So, talking about the reactor system, uh, integrated, uh, integrated, I mean, uh, control and experimental system operation, reactor system operation. So the both experimental and control lines were fed with real domestic sewage, uh, and uh, both the system were operated for over a year in continuous operation mode. Uh, so in, in contrast to the control experiment, uh, control line, uh, the experimental line was uh, was dosed with uh, ferric chloride at dosing rate of 10 milligram iron per liter, and the dosing, and we adopted uh, the intermittent intermittent dosing. So that means we we dose we dose iron salt uh, in the sewer reactor uh, four times a day at uh, at the at the, at the concentration of 10 milligram iron per liter. So this dosing rate uh, was chosen because this is the dos dosage rate that, that is within the typical range uh, used by the industry here in Australia. So these are some of the key characteristics of the domestic sewage which we use in our study. Uh, as you can see from the table, like the dissolved sulfide concentration was around 6.2 uh, milligram sulfide per liter. And similarly, all, all other, in terms of phosphate, it was 6.3 milligram phosphorus per liter. And the PS was around 7.2, uh, neutral, neutral PS condition. So this is the sampling plan we use for the wastewater effluent, sludge, and biogas analysis at the different sampling point of uh, integrated laboratory system. Uh, we analyze different uh, inorganic sulfur species, ammonium nitrate, nitrate phosphate, volatile fatty, uh, fatty acids, uh, total or dissolved or soluble iron, similar to the different suspended uh, uh, solids, uh, solid concentration, alkalinity, methane in the digester biogas. Uh, other than this, we also we also measure measure the uh, sludge volume index to measure the sludge settleability and also we also aim to measure the dewaterability or dewatering performance of uh, the the sludges both of both activated sludge and the digested or any anaerobically digested sludge so so that is about the operation of integrated laboratory system and uh, after operating for more than a year uh, we observed like the dosing of iron salt uh, in the experimental line so the decreased sulfide concentration by uh, 4.3 milligram sulfide per liter in sewer effluent. And likewise, it also helped to remove the phosphorus or the phosphate concentration by 4.7 milligram uh, phosphorus per liter in biological uh, treatment. That means SPR, a sequencing based reactor effluent. And it also helps to remove the sulfide in the anaerobic digester. And, uh, and the good thing about it uh, of dosing iron salt is that not only it helps to remove uh, sulfide in sewer, sewer reactor, phosphorus in aeration tank or a bioreactor or sulfide reduction in the digester biogas. We observe, we observe no negative impact in biological nitrogen removal. 
and there was no impact in biogas uh, volume produced in uh, both control anaerobic digester reactor and experimental anaerobic digester reactor. So other than other than the other than the removal of sulfur and the phosphorus in the different treatment units of inter, in, of uh, integrated lab, laboratory experimental control line. What we interestingly we also observe uh, the dosing of iron salt uh, helps to improve the slug settling performance in the of activated slugs. Uh, likewise, we also observe the dewaterability of uh, both activated slugs. Uh, and and the dewaterability of anaerobic anaerobically digested sludge or digested was was improved. Uh, so figuratively speaking, uh, we observed uh, the iron condition activated sludge uh, obtained from uh, SBR uh, reactor of experimental line was improved uh, by almost 30 38 percentage. And uh, likewise, we observed. Uh, the dewaterability of uh, the digested sludge uh, extracted from uh, the anaerobic digester reactor was enhanced by almost uh, a 17, 18 percentage. Uh, I must I must mention that we observe uh, we measure the dewaterability in in terms of uh, the dewatered cake solid uh, content percentage. So uh, as I mentioned before, interestingly we observe. Uh, the improved dewaterability and improved uh, settling performance of uh, both activated uh, in activated slurs um, obtained from the uh, sequencing batch reactor of the experimental line. So, so we I thought of like um, exploring this uh, this observation further. So I want to know like how, why why we observe the improved uh, dewaterability or, or the settling performance of activated slurs. So for this. Uh, I, I analyze the different uh, physiochemical, morphological, and fractal properties, also the rheological properties of the sludge, just to know why why we observe the uh, improved the dewaterability or settling or settling settling performance of the activated sludge in the experimental line, uh, which was uh, obtained from the um, from the experimental line. So as I mentioned before, we I uh, I analyze the different physiochemical, morphological, and fractal properties, and also the rheological rheological properties of the slurs. Uh, so what I observed was like there was a reduction in the soluble extra EPS extracellular polymeric substance fraction. That means there was a reduced soluble EPS fraction uh, in the, in the iron condition activated slurs. Likewise, there was a reduction in the protein. And the polysaccharide content, uh, re reduction in the protein and polysaccharide content in the in the iron condition activated slurs. Uh, likewise, uh, there was a reduced uh, monovalent to divalent cation ratio in the uh, in the in the iron iron condition activated slurs. Uh, interestingly, uh, I uh, uh, I observed the marginal increment in the median particle size of the iron condition activated slurs, and also there was a reduction in the fractal dimension. Um, uh, of that dimension of fractal properties of the iron condition activated slurs. So all these are the favorable changes in the physical, chemical, and morphological properties in the iron condition activated slurs that uh, resulted, that I believe that resulted in, uh, in improving the settling and the dewatering performance of iron condition activated slurs. Uh, so talking about the different rheological properties, analyzing different rheological properties of iron condition slurs, uh, uh, I conducted different uh, the steady or a flow test or, or even the steady rheological test or a dynamic rheological test. So the key key rheolo rheological property was a reduction in the viscosity of uh, iron condition activated sludge. So I I observed there was a reduced viscosity uh, in the iron condition activated sludge that may have further uh, result. Uh, that might be further help in improving the dewatering or settling performance of the iron condition activated slurs. So to conclude, uh, I believe all the possible uh, the, this this result favorable changes in different physiochemical, uh, morphological, and rheological properties might have played uh, the combined synergy, synergistic interplay uh, in in the in the in the that might have improved the dewaterability and and the 
settling performance of iron content activity slug. So all these, uh, the favorable synthesis was carried out in compared to the on condition, uh, the activity slug. That means that was, that was obtained from the control uh, sequencing batch reactor where we didn't dose any iron salt. So talking about the changes of uh, uh, influences of dosing, insure dosing of iron salt in uh, the microbiome, uh, microbial community of uh, active sludge in the sequencing batch reactor. Uh, as, um, so I carried out the gene sequencing and I found that uh, the relative abundance of proteobacteria, bacteroidetes and Planktomycetes were dominant in iron conditioned sludge. Likewise, likewise, the different uh, the phyla uh, of uh, of the bacterial community was, was different. Uh, dominance of different uh, bacterial phyla was dominant dominant in uh, on conditioned sludge, which was quite different. So, like uh, like like I mentioned before, the positive one of the uh, another key beneficial aspect of uh, dosing. Uh, of insure dosing of iron salt uh, in uh, uh, in sewer system to the downstream treatment plant process was the improvement in the dewaterability of anaerobic uh, digester sludge obtained from anaerobic digester. So for this also, uh, for this also like uh, like activity sludge uh, mechanic mechanistic study I carried out. Uh, I did the comparative study in the changes in uh, in the different morphological. Uh, physiochemical and the rheological properties in between on condition digested sludge and the iron condition digested sludge. So, so here also I observed different favorable changes in physiochemical and morpho morphological properties in iron condition digest digested uh, sludge in compared to the on condition uh, digested sludge. So, the main the key physiochemical uh, properties was there was a reduction in the protein-like substances uh, or a reduced protein and the polysaccharide content in the iron conditioned digested sludge. Uh, in compared to the unconditioned digested sludge, uh, likewise there, there was a decreased bond water content uh, in the iron conditioned iron condition, uh, digested sludge. So this might be one of the key factors behind improving the dewaterability of uh, the digested or the, or the digested sludge. Um, under anaerobic conditions. So also I carried out different uh, rheological tests. The key, there, were, there are different uh, um, rheological parameters. I'm not going into detail into each and every rheological parameter which I've uh, tested um, during the laboratory studies. The key, one of the key uh, rheological property uh, parameter which I want to state here is about the viscosity. So I observed that there was a reduction in the viscosity of iron condition uh, digested sludge in compared to the on condition, uh, iron, uh, I mean, on condition iron sludge. So all these positive or the favorable changes uh, observed into the physiochemical, uh, morphological, and the rheological properties that might have uh, that might have triggered the improvement in the dewaterability or the dewatering performance of the digestive digest sludge obtained from the experimental uh, experimental anaerobic digester. So another interesting thing was I also carried out some of the uh, changes in microbial communities in the digestive sludge or anaerobic di downstream anaerobic digester reactor of uh, of dosing the upstream uh, iron uh, in sewer iron salt dosing. So one of the interesting things that I observed during the during my study was the both on condition and iron condition digested sample uh, were strictly dominated by acetoclastic methanoceta. Uh, so that means, uh, uh, however, so but the in relative terms, the relative abundance of the methanoceta was higher in uh, the iron condition digested sample in compared to the on condition. Uh, digested sample. Here I mentioned the acronym ADE, ADC. So ADE signifies the ex experimental anaerobic digester reactor. Uh, likewise, ADC, uh, it signifies the controlled anaerobic digester reactor. Uh, interestingly, uh, I observed the more dominance of methanoceta in both AD. So this, this is like, uh, which is suggesting that 
uh, acidic plastic methanogenesis was the dominant methanogenic pathway in both reactor. Uh, however, this needs uh, this this initial finding needs further, uh, I believe, further investigation. So, so those were the outcomes of uh, the long-term uh, laboratory studies uh, in terms of uh, the phosphorus removal in the bioreactor, sulfide removal in the sewer system, uh, likewise the sulfide removal or desulfurization of uh, digested biogas, um, and also improvement in the changes in the settling and the dewatering performance of uh, activated slurs and uh, uh, digested slurs. Now, let me talk about uh, the full scale, full scale results of a full scale iron salt dosing study. So this is, uh, uh, so I'm just summarizing the uh, results, the key, key results of full-scale investigation of iron salt dosing in the sewer uh, and, and in a wastewater, downstream wastewater treatment plant uh, to, to uh, further investigate the multiple benefits that we observe in the, our la laboratory studies. So for this uh, full-scale study, we conducted uh, in our in one of the largest wastewater treatment plant uh, here in Queensland. Uh, so it was conducted into the full-scale wastewater treatment plant. As I mentioned, it was uh, this waste, local wastewater uh, wastewater treatment plant is one of the uh, largest uh, treatment plant here in Brisbane. Uh, so with the treatment capacity of 900,000 population equivalent, and that was treating about 60% of Brisbane domestic wastewater. So as you can see from the from the schematic diagram, so the iron salt was dosed uh, into the uh, pump well station that was like almost 15 kilometer away from the uh, upstream of inlet of uh, downstream uh, wastewater treatment plant. And uh, talking about the iron salt dosing into pump station, uh, so this dosing strategy was uh, was maintained uh, during our uh, our almost uh, full scale studies. So the, there were uh, two pumps were used during, uh, during for the iron salt dosing. One was operated continuously, uh, which doses 60 liter per hour in the gravity line. Uh, so figuratively, this this will uh, this equates to 2.2 uh, kilogram iron per megaliter uh, megaliter of sewage, uh, entering the wastewater downstream wastewater treatment plant. And another pump was a uh, pump was also used for dosing iron salt, but however. Uh, this pump was not operated continuously in a continuous mode. It was rather it was operated in the instantaneous dosing mode. Uh, so that was dosing around 180 liter per hour. Uh, that means 100 liter, 180 iron liter per hour. That's iron solution, um, uh, providing about uh, 98.5 kilogram iron per day. So. To conclude, uh, to summarize, we use um, the iron salt dosing was. Um, uh, dosing the pump station one, using two pumps. One was dosing continuously, another was dosing in, in, in another was operating in, in uh, intermittent dosing mode. So, talking. So these are the um, results of uh, the long term full scale studies. As you can see from the diagram, uh, the differences between the iron concentration total and soluble iron concentration. Uh, in the inlet of a uh, uh, downstream wastewater treatment plant. So the baseline period, that means uh, before dosing iron, initiation of iron dosing and uh, the experimental period. So the difference in the total iron concentration in the inlet of downstream wastewater treatment plant uh, was, uh, was 1.4 uh, milligram iron per liter. So uh, figuratively, that would be around uh, 178 kilogram iron per day. Uh, that's the difference between baseline period and experimental period uh, in total iron concentration in the influent of downstream wastewater treatment plant. So, the the talking about the like in the like we observe in the laboratory studies, uh, we observe the phosphate reduction in the bioreactor in the downstream treatment plant increased uh, from twenty almost twenty five percentage to. Uh, 52 percent is uh, because of in sewer iron salt dosing. Uh, likewise, we also observed the uh, substantial reduction in the dissolved sulfide uh, in the downstream anaerobic digester. So around it was around 96 uh, percent reduction in the 
dissolved sulfide concentration so in terms of the gaseous concentration we observe uh, the the reduction in uh, hydrogen sulfide concentration in the biogas was up to like uh, 40 43% is a 42.5 percentage and uh, apart from the sulfide uh, uh, phosphorus reduction in the bioreactor and uh, and uh, sulfide reduction in the digester biogas uh, we also observed the uh, almost uh, 9% uh, 10% increment in the dewatery dewaterability of digested sludge So to conclude of the full-scale uh, iron salt dosing study, um, so what it showed was like a full-scale application of iron salt dosing. Uh, so uh, so the multiple benefits like uh, akin similar to uh, the results that we observed during our uh, laboratory study. That means the insure dosing of iron salt or upstream dosing of iron salt in sewer system helps to helps to achieve different uh, multiple beneficial aspect uh, in the in the downstream treatment plan so th that is all about dosing uh, about the lab studies and the full scale studies of dosing iron salt so now let me turn another chapter that is the dosing iron rich sludge uh, so that's uh, in a in a in a long term laboratory study so the whole concept of uh, the iron sludge dosing in laboratory studies uh, that means as a as a alternative to the chemical counterpart uh, chemical counterpart that iron salt so so the water iron salt will be used as a, a primary coagulant in, into a water treatment plant and obviously that would that would gen, that would uh, generate the iron rich uh, drinking water sludge and uh, we aim to uh, we aim to direct reuse uh, such um iron rich water sludge into into the sewer network and 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 the and the downstream wastewater treatment plant like uh, like uh, we we implemented in terms of uh, for the iron salt so so we conducted the iron sludge dosing into in, in the same laboratory setting that we use for iron salt so that means it also consists of two parallel lines control and experimental each line consists of integrated sewer reactor sequencing dash reactor uh, gravity sludge thickener and anaerobic digester uh, in a, in a like uh, how we operated uh, uh, for the for the iron salt dosing we we implemented the same similar similar reaction oper operation strategy and the dosing rate so both experimental control lines were fed with the real domestic sewage uh, which were obtained from the uh, local uh, wet well or pump station and uh, it was also operated both the system were operated for over a year in continuous operation mode uh, like uh, like iron salt uh, here the iron rich sludge also uh, was dosed uh, under uh, intermittent dosing strategy and it was uh, fed into the experimental line or experimental sewer, uh, sewer reactor at uh, the concentration of 10 mg iron per liter so these are uh, some of the key characteristic of a domestic sewage used in the study uh, it was almost similar to the domestic sewage that we used for our uh, lab laboratory study using iron salt and um, uh, talking about the key characteristic of iron rich uh, water treatment plant sludge or water works sludge in this study as you can see the iron concentration was around 158 uh, mg iron per gram, gram solid so this was the concentration of uh, iron uh, in the iron sludge that we were we were using for our laboratory studies. Likewise, the total COD in the iron rich sludge was 9.2 gram COD per liter, and uh, soluble COD is around um, uh, less than one one uh, gram COD per liter. So, talking about the laboratory results. Uh, uh, we observed here so in a graph you can see uh, the two phases phase one and phase two and the dotted line so we operated both the line unless until we achieved the steady state uh, condition so once we observe the once we obtain the steady state condition in the both uh, experimental and control line then uh, we start dosing the iron rich sludge into the experimental line so this dotted line in the in the graph uh, uh, indicates the time frame when we started the dosing of iron rich sludge into the experimental line as you can clearly see from the graph 
uh, there is a substantial difference in terms of sulfide concentration in uh, in the in the uh, sugary flint uh, of control and experimental line. So. So we observe uh, the sulfide concentration in experimental CO refluent was decreased by almost uh, uh, 3.5 milligram sulfide per liter in compared to the control CO refluent. Uh, in terms of pH, we we uh, it, it was similar in the both uh, uh, both both CO reactor. So it, talking about uh, like I mentioned before, this phase one and phase two and the dotted line. So. Uh, in the in a downstream uh, aeration tank or the downstream sequencing batch reactor, uh, we observed that uh, the post-loss concentration was decreased by almost uh, uh, 3.6 milligram uh, p per liter uh, in the effluent of uh, experimental sequencing batch reactor. Uh, apart from the reduction in the phosphate concentration in the in the sequencing batch reactor, we also observed the uh, improved uh, uh, settling performance or settleability of activated slurs uh, in the experimental sequence index reactor. Uh, so we use the, the slurs volume index uh, to measure the, the settling performance of activated slurs. The slurs volume index uh, decreased from 193 uh, to 108 milli, milliliter per gram uh, in iron condition activated slurs when we start dosing the iron rich slurs in the upstream sewer reactor. Uh, so this is the this is the result of uh, uh, of sulfide concentration into the digested slurs. Uh, as as we can see, uh, uh, the iron rich slurs dosing into upstream sewer reactor also helps to remove the uh, sulfide concentra uh, concentration in downstream anaerobic digester like uh, iron salt. Uh, so we we observe that the dissolved sulfide concentration in experimental uh, anaerobic digester would decrease by almost 16 uh, milligram sulfide per liter. So, and also, uh, other than the sulfide uh, reduction in sulfide, dissolved sulfide concentration in the digested slurs, we also measured the dewaterability and we, we found uh, that uh, the dewaterability of anaerobically digested slurs was also improved uh, by almost uh, by almost like uh, from it increased from the 16 percent uh, percentage to the 19 percentage. So talk, this is the the diagram shows the profile of uh, the biogas production in the downstream anaerobic digester when we implemented the in uh, sewer iron rich slurs dosing uh, in the upstream sewer reactor. So as you can see from the graph, like. Uh, uh, there is a consistent difference in between the uh, uh, biogas volume produced in uh, produced in the experimental AD reactor that remains similar before and after the uh, before and after introduction of iron slurs. Uh, the, the dotted line here in the graph shows the introduction of uh, the iron slurs dosing uh, in the experimental line. Uh, so that, is, that means in the phase one, uh, phase one signifies before we start dosing the iron slurs, there was a, around the biogas volume produ produced uh, in experimental AD reactor was around 41.4 milliliter per day, and uh, and in in the phase two, uh, we we observed the the biogas volume produced in the experimental AD reactor was around 40 milliliter per day. Yeah. So what I try to clarify here is uh, uh, we observed the uh, reduction in the, the sulfide uh, produced in the uh, dissolved sulfide in digested uh, digested. Uh, slurs. Not only that, uh, there was no also, there was no effect in biogas volume produced in the experimental AD reactor uh, because of dosing iron rich slurs in upstream uh, sewer reactor. So to conclude, uh, this uh, laboratory studies of dosing iron rich slurs uh, 
that the dosing of iron raised uh, drinking water slurs or the slurs observed uh, obtained from the water treatment plant. Uh, it helps to remove dissolved sulfide concentration in sewer in uh, yuppies to yes ratio around 0.61. Uh, uh, so similarly, it also helps to remove the phosphorus in the, bi in the, in the bioreactor. So that yuppies to P phosphorus ratio would be uh, 0.65. Um, in terms of dissolved sulfide, uh, 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 reduction in digester, anaerobic digester, there we observe almost 90% reduction. And in terms of the improvement in the dewaterability of anaerobically digested slurs, uh, because of in sewer iron rich slurs, we, we observe almost 18% this increment in the dewaterability of anaerobically digested slurs from the, of the obtained from the experimental uh, AD reactor. So that means we observe the similar uh, results uh, like uh, like uh, the iron salt dosing. So that was about all the results about dosing iron iron with slurs in the laboratory setting in the integrated manner. So let me let me head into another chapter uh, just to just to in, uh, investigate further about the. To show the efficacy of uh, reusing uh, iron rich slurs in the pilot sewer system. So, this was another study conduct, conducted just to uh, see the efficacy of uh, dosing, uh, direct reusing of iron rich or aluminium uh, containing waterworks slurs for sulfide and phosphorus removal in the pilot scale uh, sewer system. So, then the question would be why reusing waterworks slurs? Uh, because uh, like I mentioned uh, in my earlier slide also, the chemical dosing is a widely used approach for mitigation for mitigating sulfide production in the sewer system. Uh, and iron salt only contributes about around 66.4% in Australia uh, in, in redu uh, with, as, as a mitigation measure for reducing the sulfide production in sewer system. So, however, uh, iron salt, dosing of iron salt is effective in reducing the sulfide induced sewer corrosion but it requires continuous continuous dosing and that may result the high operational cost uh, likewise another factor uh, another factor is increasing chemical coagulant usage cost so there has been one recent report which suggests uh, which reported that the global cost of inorganic uh, chemical coagulants used for water wastewater treatment in 2018 was around 1.37 billion dollar and this is predicted to reach uh, 1.84 billion dollar by 2023 and uh, in, in Australia, most of the water utilities use uh, alum or aluminum sulfate as a uh, primary co uh, coagulant in water treatment processes. Hello. Hello. Yes, hello, I can hear you. Okay, I, I was... I was... I was kind of worried because I'm seeing some kind of issue in the in my Wi-Fi. Okay, that's good to know. So all good. I've got some questions at the end, but keep going. Okay, uh, that's fine. I'm ready for that. Uh, <clears throat> and another thing is like why reusing direct using of waterworks slurs? Uh, because uh, obviously the generation or production of waterworks slurs uh, is is a is an innovative byproduct byproduct in water treatment plant. So so depending on the uh, the coagulant that we use in the water treatment plants, we are, we we're gonna obtain the similar uh, the slurs. Let's say if we if we use iron coagulant um, as a primary coagulant in water treatment process, then we observe the we gonna obtain iron rich slurs. Likewise, if we use alum uh, as a primary coagulant in water treatment process in a water treatment plant, then we're gonna observe we're gonna obtain the alum aluminium rich uh, the water work slurs. And one study in the report has suggested that globally water treatment plant slurs exceeds around 3.65 multiply uh, 10 to the power 6 dry tons per year, that which is a massive amount. Uh, likewise, in the water treatment slurs uh, by an Australian water utilities, uh, uh, one report recent report suggested was it ranges from 150 to 43,500 dry, dry tons per year. So it, uh, it varies depending on the, on the size of a water treatment plant. And uh, so, so 
Always the Water Works Clause management has been a big issue in Australia. I mean, um, traditionally, uh, the Water Works uh, Clause are dried or stuck piled on site for years. And um, um, the recent study uh, report of GSD uh, suggested, uh, reported some of the common disposal route uh, for the Water Works Clause uh, generated from water treatment plants. Uh, they are either directly dosed, uh, some, of the, some of the water utilities in Australia, uh, or some of the water utilities in Australia, they um, they they have they have also directly discharged the water water works laws in the sewer, and uh, primarily or they primarily most of the water water utilities in Australia they prefer uh, the lagoons or landfill landfill site for the disposal or disposing of the water works laws. However, uh, this scenario it varies within with country to country. Uh, the same, same in case of Australia, the end use or the disposal uh, route of uh, the preferences, uh, it varies within the state. Uh, so the here in our particular focus is the, to see the efficacy of do, uh, direct using, reusing of iron uh, or iron reeds or alum, aluminum reeds slurs into the sewer system. So the so objective was like the direct use, reusing of uh, iron reeds or aluminum reeds sludge into uh, the sewer system. Can it be a credible solution for the sustainable water treatment plant sludge management? So that was the pre key uh, research objective of this uh, pilot scale study. So the objective was to investigate the impact of, like I mentioned before, to investigate the impact of reusing uh, the waterworks sludge aluminum reed or iron reed slurs and sulfide phosphate uh, and other major sewage characteristics. And I'll be, and, and another issue also to look into the underlying mechanism behind the removal of sulfide removal uh, or the phosphate removal of dosing iron, iron slurs, uh, iron reeds or aluminum reed slurs. So the method that we use for this pilot study uh, was like uh, in terms of iron slurs, we obtained this slurs from the Gold Coast desalination treatment plant. Uh, and for the aluminium reef slurs, I mean, we obtained this from the Mount Crosby West water treatment plant. Uh, so in Queensland, I mean, uh, the majority of the water treatment plants use alum as a primary coagulant. Uh, that's why it was very hard for us to get uh, iron reef uh, slurs. Uh, from the water treatment plant that uh, treats the fresh water. Uh, that's why we, 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 were, we, we were forced, uh, we were obliged to get the widened reed slurs uh, from the desalination plant instead. So these are the characteristics, uh, water work, uh, characteristics of the water work slurs we use in our study. Uh, so in, in iron slurs, the iron concentration was about 884 uh, milligram per liter. Uh, the, that's 884, that is total iron. Uh, in terms of um, soluble iron, that was in a trace amount, that is negligible amount. And in alum slurs, the iron concentration was, uh, the aluminum concentration was, uh, that's the total aluminum, that's 122 milligram per gram dry solid. Because uh, in terms of alum, so iron slurs, we got, we, actually we got uh, from the desalination plant in the slurry form. Uh, but in alum slurs, we, we got these slurs from in a, in a cake form, in the kind of cake, semi-solid. So let me, let me highlight how we conducted our pilot sewer study. So this is a schematic diagram of pilot sewer that's uh, located into, in uh, Luggage Point West Oil Driven Plant, uh, the innovation center. So the sewer, uh, pilot sewer, uh, the study was conducted into rising main sewer or a pressurized sewer of 100 millimeter diameter length uh, around 300 meter. And the volume of uh, each uh, line was 2.35 meter cube. Uh, so how it was operated was like, uh, so this is in the, in the whole pi pilot sewer pipe, uh, we pump the fresh uh, wastewater at the flow rate of 550 liter per minute. And we continue the dosing uh, of uh, uh, 550, uh, dosing of uh, wastewater at the rate 550 liter per minute for, uh, for 15 minutes, just to completely re replenish uh, 
uh, the wastewater uh, that were existed existed in the inside the sewer pipe. So the here I have mentioned, I have shown here one uh, one one is the experimental line uh, that's a two two dimensional, and once after dosing the wastewater fresh uh, uh, wastewater inside the sewer uh, pipe, uh, sewer pipe, uh, then we stop the when stop the dosing of uh, the wastewater, then we initiate uh, the dosing of uh, sludge at the two liter per minute, and we continued uh, the dosing dosing at the rate, uh, uh, and we dose the sludge with the objective of uh, uh, getting additional hundred uh, one gram total solid per liter in experimental line, uh, not more than that, uh, and the hydraulic retention time. Uh, in both line, experimental and control line, was six hour because for like this was operated in bath mode. And uh, once we dose the slug at uh, two liter per minute uh, for ten minutes, then we stop dosing both the wastewater and the slug. Then we initiate uh, the re recirculation pump. The whole objective of uh, recirculation pump was operated at uh, 10, 10 liter per minute, and the whole. And the objective of uh, using the resuscitation pump was to keep the solid in suspension mode under uh, just to mimic uh, the solid in suspension under continuous flow regime inside the sewer pipe. And uh, we got the, and we had the, we maintained the three sampling points in the pilot sewer system uh, at the 15 meter uh, from the dosing location at 105 meter and a 210 meter just to uh, get the uh, just to get the three. Triplicate sampling point. So the key findings of uh, the pilot sewer studies uh, were, uh, were in terms of the waterworks sludge, um, iron rich sludge. We uh, we observe uh, the main difference in sulfide dissolved sulfide concentration was uh, uh, around 13 milligram sulfide per liter. So in terms of the figuratively, it would be around 57% uh, percent reduction in the experimental line in compared to the control line. Uh, likewise, uh, uh, the iron rich loss dosing was effective for sulfide removal at a ratio of 0.29 milligram sulfide per milligram iron. Uh, and in terms of the underlying mechanism, what we found was like the precipitation reaction between sulfide uh, and the ferric ions in the present in the iron slurs was the main dominant mechanism or dominant pathway uh, behind the dissolved sulfide removal when we do the iron rich slurs. Uh, likewise, in terms of uh, when we uh, dosing iron, alum, or aluminum rich slurs in the sewer system, uh, we observe that the uh, the reduction in the phosphate concentration in the two sewer line uh, by let's say uh, there was a reduction in phosphate concentration in experimental experimental pipe or sewer pipe uh, by 5.3 milligram phosphorus per liter, uh, which was a statistical significant in compared to the control line. And uh, that means the there was a relative reduction by almost 98 percentage in the experimental line uh, in terms of phosphate reduction, uh, and and. And in terms of ratio, what we found was like alum sludge was effective for phosphate removal at the ratio of 0 0.29 uh, milligram phosphorus per milligram aluminum ion. And uh, talking about the dominant um, uh, mechanism, uh, underlying mechanism of uh, phosphate removal when dosing alum sludge was the ligand exchange process between surface uh, hydroxyl group uh, and the phosphate ion. So the ligand exchange was the dominant pathway behind uh, the observed removal of phosphate uh, when using the aluminium read uh, aluminium read the water treatment plant slurs. So the key takeaway message from this pilot sewer study was like uh, there's a potential multiple benefits of dosing uh, what iron read or aluminium read waterworks slurs uh, in the sewer. Uh, uh, like I mentioned before, the um, like I mentioned before, it shows the efficacy of dosing uh, the iron rich or the aluminum rich slurs. Uh, the iron rich slurs was, was found to more effective in reducing sulfide, uh, wherein uh, the aluminum rich slurs was found to be more effective in reducing phosphate concentration in the, in, in the sewer. Uh, uh, and we also observed that there was no effect in soluble uh, COD removal in, in, the, in the both, both cases in, uh, while dosing iron rich or aluminum rich slurs. 
And uh, another important finding was that uh, we didn't observe any increment in uh, dissolved methane or nitrous oxide formation in the, both the sewer pipe, uh, nor the release of another toxic heavy metal, heavy metal ion in the, in the, in the sewage when dosing both uh, water works plus. So these are all about uh, the, the key results that we observed uh, while conducting uh, the long-term lab scale study uh, uh, under the control laboratory settings and also conducting pilot sewer study and, uh, and the full-scale uh, full treatment, plan, uh, treatment plan study uh, and of dosing both uh, iron or the, in, either in the form of iron salt or in the form of iron rich flux. And in, on top of that, uh, uh, I have also presented the efficacy of direct reu reusing of aluminum-based slugs uh, when we dose into, in, into the sewer system. Uh, we found that uh, the aluminum-rich aluminum -rich slugs was highly effective in reducing phosphate concentration in the, uh, in the, in the sewer system. So uh, to, to summarize, uh, to conclude my talk, uh, I just wanna say the results uh, that I have discussed so far it to clearly highlight uh, the potential. Uh, potential. Uh, so that means the re reusing or using uh, iron either in the form of iron salt or in the iron rich sludge uh, uh, in, in the integrated urban wastewater system that would help us to substantially reduce the chemical footprint of uh, urban water utilities. Uh, and that was uh, this. This has been uh, evidenced by. Uh, the both uh, tests conducted uh, under laboratory condition and real life situation. Uh, also, we found that the iron dosing not only showed positive impact uh, uh, in terms of uh, phosphate and the sulfide related reaction during wa wastewater treatment and the slow digestion processes. Uh, it also, uh, notably, it also showed no negative impact on biological processes such as nitrogen removal in bioreactor and the sludge properties. And we observed the favorable changes in the sludge properties in, term, in terms of the settling and the dewatering performance of both activated sludge and the, and the de, and digested sludge. Uh, and another key issue I wanna highlight here is that uh, this, this, study, this study clearly identified the opportunity for water, both the water and wastewater utilities to collaborate and the share the benefits providing the services uh, to the uh, to the consumers at reduced cost with uh, with improved uh, environmental sustainability because uh, this project as a whole is a peculiar striking example striking example of a circular economy uh, which aimed at pro uh, which aimed at uh, achieving multiple beneficial aspect uh, at the at the at the, at the using uh, at the reduced uh, at the reduced uh, uh, economic cost. So lastly, I want to acknowledge um, some of the key persons here. So in this way, I want to conclude my talk for today. Hopefully, uh, so these are some of the some of some of the, the key key research research work that I have conducted in my PhD. Uh, still, there are. Some more, I think I presented here only about 60%, 70% of my PhD research work. So we, we, uh, today I couldn't accommodate all my uh, the research work which I have conducted uh, uh, during my PhD. So thanks a lot for listening to me. Yeah. Yeah, Ben. Thank you so much. That was, that was really fascinating. Ben, would you like to take over and if there are any questions? Um, yeah, thank you, Sohan. They definitely made you work during that PhD, didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> the amount of stuff that you covered there. Um, I'm still using thousands of litres of um, alum a year. Sohan, you, you may have convinced me to swap over to iron salts. Sorry? Can you, can you repeat the question? I'm still using thousands of litres of uh, alum a year. So, yeah. Han, you may have convinced me to swap over to iron salts for some applications. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, this we have uh, this we had an issue during our during the uh, while undertaking the project. I mean, uh, we 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 observed that uh, the procuring the iron rich was a became a major issue during um, while conducting our lab studies and the and the full scale study. We 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 had to wait like more than a year just to get uh, the sludge. So we had to rely, we had to go to Sydney and get the sludge from Sydney water because Sydney water is, uh, was only the major utility in Australia that we're using the iron salt as a, as a coagulant. Yeah. Um, and, one of the things I found interesting during your presentation, and there were plenty in there to get into, yeah. I would have thought that the COD would have been higher with the iron salt treatment simply because iron is such a big oxidizer. Um, but it was really very close to alum all the way through that there was a significant difference there in a, a couple of the places. But um, yeah, I would have thought that COD would have been much higher using the alum salts again and again and again, but your, your research showed that that wasn't the case. You there? Did you hear me? So, Han, did you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm here. I'm listening to you. Yeah, I can hear you. Yep. Why, so do, why you... do you think that uh, there wasn't much difference in COD between the alum and the iron salts? Between alum and iron salts. So basically, we conducted study. This study is separately. Yeah not together. Yeah. Yeah, so like, is, is, uh, do I, did I clarify? I mean. Oh yeah. Uh, terms, uh, uh, I mean, let, let me, let me, let me clarify. So in terms of like, yeah, uh, in terms of persuading the water, water utilities, Australian water utilities, I think uh, I got the news maybe a few months back, right? The, right now, the Luggage point. I mean, urban utilities, Queensland urban utilities, they are implementing uh, the dosing of iron salt in the full scale uh, very soon. So they are dosing into the into the sewer, like upper catchment sewer network, and uh, and they are seeing like uh, the uh, the impact uh, in the in the downstream uh, luggage point wastewater treatment plant. So uh, I didn't mention here about the results that we obtained in terms of. Uh, uh, the Catman wide study that we conducted, uh, that we observed uh, in, in, in Oxley Creek wastewater treatment plant then. So even in Oxley Creek wastewater treatment plant, uh, we, we conducted the Catman wide, uh, Catman, Catman wide study uh, in terms of iron sludge. So we observed the similar result, uh, the multiple beneficial expect uh, uh, in the Oxley Creek wastewater treatment plant as well. So the result I presented here, uh, I, I'm showing that we, the study that we conducted in the Logos Point wastewater treatment plant. Yep. Um, a lot of people doing their PhDs, they only do laboratory based work and they never actually bring it into the real world like that you have here. Yeah. Um, yeah. What did you find worked well or modeled well from your laboratory results that you didn't find when you took it to the actual sewage treatment plant? So Was there anything um, that occurred in the lab laboratory that uh, surprised you when you started working in the field with it? Yeah, some very, sometimes, yeah, obviously it's a big difference like working in the lab, on the laboratory settings and, and the real life uh, situation in the, in the treatment plant. Yeah, sometimes, I think a few times uh, we observed some, some kind of like uh, contrasting result. Uh, however, like, uh, uh, yeah, I think a few times we observed like kind of like a, mm, quite quite some some strange outcomes when we conducted in the into the uh, in the full scale study. Then. Yep. And um... maybe maybe that maybe because of the changes in the composition of wastewater, you know, domestic sewage. Like even during the during the daytime, there, there's a there's a fluctuation in the wastewater composition, maybe, and also the flow rate. Yep. Yeah, no, I'm a bit jealous that you got to work there at Luggage Point, where I'm doing a, a, a lot of work in smaller yeah. wastewater facilities. The variation in the inflow water chemistry is huge. 
Yeah, Whereas yeah. with with luggage point, it a lot smaller but you, you're exactly right you've got your morning peaks you've got your evening peaks yeah luggage yeah. point can tell the difference between a monday's wastewater compared to a sunday or a sunday's because people act yeah. differently at, at home but you still get that that variation and mm -hmm. i think that's one of the reasons why people love to work in the lab doing their phds they can basically make a artificial yeah. wastewater with a really mm -hmm. uh, consistent range of parameters but once you start dealing in the real world and yeah. things get a little bit uh yeah brisbane's not too bad but you'd still get stormwater intrusions during uh big yeah. rainfall events yeah. and yeah mm -hmm. so that, that's that's what we we i think i observed like during like a month of uh, the sampling in the, into the wet well station like wet well uh uh, yep. I can see like, you know, like sampling for the whole day. I can see visibly from my eye, like the changes in the, in, let's say like from eye, from the eye, we can see the changes in the, the domestic sewage. Like in the morning time, it's, it's different. And in the daytime, it's different. Like in a, in a evening or afternoon time, it's a, it looks somewhat completely different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you had there that the Gold Coast desalination plant was using iron salts as part of its pretreatment. Were they doing that instead of alum um, as far as alum's got a higher clogging potential with the membranes and the uh, iron salts are a bit easier to remove as far as the clogging potential is concerned? Uh, yeah, this, this was one of the key issues, like the, I mentioned here, one of our project partners, like the Public Utility Board Singapore, they wanna, they, are, they were really interested to see the impact of, uh, like there's a coagulant changeover, uh, to the impact on the, in the membrane performance. I mean, I don't know, there are like a very contrasting result in different studies. So I did some literature review regarding that. Some studies says like, oh, iron salt is better in compared to alum. Uh, let's say, um, you know, it, it forms the larger flux and that may that that caused the uh, what memory fouling. Uh, I don't know. There's there, I, I found like quite uh, quite contrasting results. Um, studies there's some studies are saying alum is better in compared to iron salt uh, for uh, in terms of membrane fouling. Some are saying uh, iron is better in terms of alum uh, in membrane fouling. Yeah. Yeah, we've got some sites where we run our own have got yeah. alum at the start of the. Um, treatment chain, I always worry about this, the clogging impact, you know, the SDI on the membranes and all the rest of it. We mm -hmm. basically always use ozone there as a pretreatment before we go into membranes. And I dare say the ozone would be fairly good at oxidizing any residue of iron salts out that we hadn't removed. So yeah, you, you've got me thinking with your presentation and um, mm -hmm. yeah. always got people um, chasing questions in regards to phosphorus removal as, as well. And like Dendra is relaxing in Hawaii now, but before living in Hawaii, she was uh, over on the Great Lakes in the United States in, in Michigan and phosphorus runoff into the lakes is one of the big things, which yeah, yeah, yeah. is um, looked at in North America, both on the Canadian and the United States side of the border as far as an in, environmental problem and I know that alum's used just as frequently over in North America as it is here in Australia if uh, swapping over to iron salts helps uh, reduce phosphorus runoff that would be a, a big environmental win for a lot of the freshwater lakes over in North America. Yeah so in in, uh, in North America like do they have uh, I think they have like common fuel system right not the separate fuel, fuel system like in Australia and Europe. Uh, it depends on where you are, highly variable. Oh, so okay. age of system and on-site systems are a lot more common as well than what they are here. So oh. everybody loves a fish and shack on a, on a lake with a septic tank right next oh. to the bore or the well from what I understand. But, you know, dendra is weird like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you, can, you can see one of, the, one of our major, another major industry partners was DC Water from here. So Sorry, I missed have, that. You can see, like, we have uh, another international industry partner for our monthly project was that DC Water. And one was UV from Singapore, DC Water from Washington. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll see them there. Yeah. Yeah, they, yeah. They, they, they were actively, yeah, they were actively involved in the, our, let's say, uh, monthly face to face meeting, uh, Skype meeting, you know, teleconferencing, all those things. Like, yeah, we have to present our results on a, on a monthly basis to all the project partners. 
And uh, yeah, the key issue about the membrane issue was uh, raised, I think, um, during the project was from PUD because they were interested, very much interested to see the impact of like coagulate changeover, okay, in the, in the membrane performance. They were, they were more keen into the membrane fouling issue, whether that would be triggered uh, when using iron salt uh, in, 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 instead of like in place of uh, alum. Yep. Well, Singapore Water Week has um, just wound up in the last couple of days and they've had their big water conference. Um, Singapore is a, yeah. a country which is absolutely um, fascinated and, and highly driven as far yeah. as their water industry is concerned because they mm -hmm. haven't had much control over it and it, it's something that they uh, basically have a, a national security need to to, to get in line. So uh, I can understand how they'd be very interested in your research there. So yeah, another, another, is, issue they, another issue they were interested in the, you know, that uh, uh, the stockpiling, they like, say the traditional way of uh, disposing slugs uh, is like stockpiling, right? You know, in a particular site for, for. Yeah. Oh, well, are saying lost your audio again there. So him. Actually, the question I had, I was interested, is this reducing the volume of the sludge, particularly after it's dried? Because again, as Ben said, living on an island, um, you don't have a lot of real estate to dispose of the byproduct. It was around 10%. Um better off in dewatering, wasn't it? The iron salts, so hand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So because uh, that, that was 10% of its improvement in dewaterability and uh, the Paul McPhee, I think you know the Paul McPhee, right? The lowest point, question yeah. of utilities. So I think one of the operator told, uh, told us at the time was like, even the 1% increment in dewaterability would save millions of dollars for the- Yeah. yeah. For the so 10%, is yeah, yeah 10 times bigger yeah. than one percent so that's yeah. tens of millions of dollars but, this is true but, and another, another another substantial economic uh, benefit was like uh, they absorbed the substantial uh, sulfide uh, argon sulfide in the digester biogas yep okay which was, I mean, yeah which was massive yeah yeah the um jim down in um south australia has been doing a long-term project as far as being able to reuse uh, biosolids from the water treatment industry. And, and this is mainly alum flock rather than iron sulfate, but um, using that sludge in stormwater treatment projects in urban areas because yeah. of the way that it compacts or doesn't compact, it allows the water to go through it. And mm -hmm. um, so planting trees in it uh, around urban bus stops and those types of things, which are, you know, full of concrete, highly compacted people walking around. So green space projects in um, urban areas using um, water treatment sludge. So, and I'm sure a, a mixture of the um, iron salt sludge and the alum sludge together would have those beneficial impacts that you were talking about there before, yeah. because one of the things they're trying to reduce is phosphorus runoff from yeah. stormwater going into stormwater systems and, you know, <clears throat> Not that it rains in Adelaide where Jim is, so man, you know, when it rained for forty days and forty nights in the Bible, Adelaide got ten mil. So, oh, oh interesting. Okay, I would be, I would be more than happy to be involved. Just let me know, Ben. Yep. Should I should I talk with Jim? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll 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 have a chat. Yeah. Because because I think they, uh, I saw some recent study like they are using alum sludge as a what, as a locking locking uh, material for PFAS as well. Right. Yep, so they're, they're, they're doing that and yeah. also, yeah, it's compactability so that plants remain alive in it uh -huh. um, where normally oh, yeah, spill yeah, yeah. compaction would, uh, yeah, stop water infiltration and, uh, yeah, do it in. Oh, yeah. So, so when, when, we were, when we went to like one of the few of the treatment plants in, uh, on the sick water, the southeast uh, sick water here, uh, we found some of the guys were doing uh, using uh, like alum slug as a fertilizer. Yeah, I, I, we, I, we, I saw that one, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, it, it's, as you said there in your presentation, your literature review and whatever showed that it's, a, a lot of it goes to landfill 
and it's just used to cap dumps and yeah. that type of thing. But we, we uh, with your circular economy images there at the end of your slide and talking about reusing waste products and um, mm -hmm. harvesting nutrients and that type of thing, we've got a phosphorus shortage coming up. So ways that we can bind phosphorus and um, mm -hmm. use it where we want to use it so that it's not escaping out to the environment as a pollutant, yeah, really makes sense to me. Yeah, because we absorb like it's substantially almost like 99% 90, removal in phosphorus when we're using Allen Plus. That is highly effective. So all the mechanistic yep. study that way that I conducted was like uh, in the lab 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 study. So I did multiple multiple tests with using Allen Plus, and the only for the uh, to investigate the mechanism behind uh, underlying the mechani mechanism behind the phosphorus removal. So yeah, it is highly effective in Allen Plus compared like uh, compared to the sulfide. Yeah. Well, thank you so yeah. much. That was that was a really um, that's that's what is it? An hour and a bit, and it went by in a in a heartbeat. That was. Fascinating. Well, to you listen. stay online, Dendra. We've got a quiz coming up for you. We've got 10 questions. They, they should be easy enough. <laughs> All righty. I will. I will certainly stick around. Uh, I'm going to pause the recording here for a second. Uh, but in the meantime, thank you, everybody, for watching and attending. And uh, do come back for the next one in the series.